Let us offer our consecration to the Lord. Lord, we offer up to you this day, and we ask that your name be glorified in all that we do. We ask that we may love you, serve you, honor you, and obey you. We ask that we may be your servants, as you call us, to glorify all that you do, all that you are, so that others may know of your greatness and love. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Today is the uh, feast of St. Dominic, who is the founder of what is known as the Order of Preachers. If you ever see any priest with their name O.P. at the end of it, that means Order of Preachers. So uh, he is the founder of that order. He died in uh, 1230, I believe. 1230, 1231, um, around that time, obviously. One of the most famous members of the Order of Preachers, by the way, besides obviously being St. Dominic, is St. Thomas Aquinas, and he was obviously a Dominican. And the Order of Preachers, of course, their whole mission was to preach the gospel. Now, we're living in an interesting time now because we're called to preach the gospel as well. But I think one one mistake we make when preaching the gospel is we preach it the way it was done a long time ago, uh, in the time of the order of preachers. Now, you might say, but the gospel is the gospel. You're right. The context, in other words, to whom we are preaching, is different. And we're preaching very much to a scientific-oriented audience oriented group of people. And I'm not necessarily talking about the people in your church. I'm talking in general, people who aren't going to church, people who maybe are trying to learn a little bit more about who Jesus is, but are uh, either away from the church or maybe turned away from the church. Whether we're talking Catholic or non-Catholic, Catholic. We're just talking in general. And there are people who uh, may know of Christianity, may have been brought up in Christianity, but have turned away from it. And uh, one of the things that they will embrace is something we've talked about here a lot, and that is the whole concept of science. So they will embrace science and they will reject faith. And of course, I've talked about uh, this to you in the past, that science and faith uh, are actually not enemies, they are complementary. Remember, there is no such thing as compassion in science. Science, it has, uh, put it really simply, science has the compassion of a printer. And when I'm thinking of printer, I used to work for the Boston Globe back long before, long before it was bought by the New York Times. And there were obviously these huge, I think they were like three, maybe three to five story tall printers. I remember as a, as a child, my father used to take me there and we'd look at the printers and we'd watch the, you know, the, the newspaper print, which came on these huge rolls and it would print the newspaper, and it would print it every day, and there it went, and the whole bit. And I actually worked for a time as a janitor and a security guard, so I worked for a time cleaning that area, which obviously, considering there's ink going all over the place, you can imagine what kind of a job that was. So <laughs> anyway, that's what, that's one of the things that I used to do. So I, I looked at these huge, towering printers, and they can be an example of technology. They can be an example of science. Even today, there's a whole different technology that's used in printing, but they, they can be used as technology and science, but there's no emotion there. There's nothing. And it literally is a concept, a con- concept of garbage in, garbage out, of all forms of technology. We know that when it comes to computers, garbage in, gar- garbage out. So what that means is that they're machines. They do what machines do. And what matters is what you put into the machine. And if you put garbage in the machine, garbage will come out of the machine. That's all there is to it. If you put, uh, usually it's used in the concept of people who do uh, programming. If you put bad code in, your result will be a bad program. So garbage in, garbage out. So we understand that and we look at that And we can see that. And why does that happen? Because a machine does what a machine does. So science is like a machine. A machine is going to do what a machine is going to do. And it can do great things. 
it can do evil things. We can see that this past Saturday was not only the Feast of the Transfiguration, ironically enough, it's also the anniversary of dropping the bomb on Hiroshima. So garbage in, garbage out. A machine is going to do what a machine is going to do. It's going to do whatever it's told to do. That's what machines do. That's what science is. Science is going to do what the tools of science allow it to do. But there's no compassion in science. A good example of that, obviously, is Dr. Mengele. That combination, Dr. Mengele. You put those two words together. Doctor, it kind of evokes the sounds of compassion, Mengele. It evokes the sounds of evil. Dr. Mengele. So you can see that. So science can go either way. What you need is the compassion in order to make science work well. That's what we need. And that goes for all forms of science, whether we're talking physics, biology, or for that matter, a political science. It's, it's the same thing. So science is always going to give you facts, and what is needed is compassion, which is what Christianity is all about. If you are not loving God and loving neighbor, you're not living a Christian life. We're going to talk more about this on the other side of the break. You're listening to St. Anthony Overnight from St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts, right here on WEZE. 590 AM, and you can also hear the entire podcast at catholicaudiomedia.com. I want to call your attention to Catholic TV, which offers great faith-filled, family-friendly programming 24 hours a day. You can find your cable channel at www.getcatholictv.com, and you can watch online on the free apps or check out the YouTube channel. Daily Mass, Rosaries, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, and the Our Lady of Perpetual Help Novena are all available online and on demand. Check out catholictv.com. And don't forget our own website, catholicaudiomedia.com. That's catholicaudiomedia.com. You can check out the website. You can connect to the parish. You can listen to the archives of the show. You can also uh, send us feedback. Please consider doing that. That means a lot, especially if you have a subject that you want us to cover. Uh, I'm happy to do that if you have a question or anything else. All that stuff at catholicaudiomedia.com. Maybe I should tell you, by the way, if you send me a letter and it doesn't have any form of responding to you and it's a suggestion for a program, I won't use it. Just so you know, if, it, if you're going to send this anonymously, I won't use it. And that's generally a rule in a lot of ministry. If you send a letter and whatever, whether it's praise or whether it's condemnation, and you don't have a uh, return address or any way to contact the person, usually we just throw those away. So just so you know that. So anyway, we're, we're continuing to talk about that whole thing of science and faith. Well, back in the time of St. Dominic, obviously the prevailing of the two was faith. People believed in science, but science also was considered a part of philosophy and theology, so they kind of worked together. And don't forget, he lived in the 12th, the 13th century. He died in the 13th century, is a better way to express it. Whereas uh, St. Alphonsus Liguori, who we talked about last week, he uh, li- he died two years before the U.S. Constitution was ratified, and he's talking about using leeching as a form of healing. So that's and that's in the 18th century. So you can see how rudimentary the science is. Right now, the science is developed. But one of the reasons I also bring that up in light of the context of Saint Dominic is this. Uh, One of the things I'm seeing a lot is people are describing a sign of ignorance, and this is fascinating to hear this, is that many uh, Americans, as a sign of their ignorance, believe in angels. Now, every time I hear that, I go, actually, it's the other way around. Why? Because if you say there's no such thing as angels, then you are saying that you actually define what exists in the universe. Because why do people say they don't believe in angels? Because they don't see them. So the only thing that can possibly exist is what you can see with or without the unaided eye. 
okay? So as you can see, that that is a very small concept of our universe, whereas people of faith believe in a larger concept. We believe there are realities beyond what we can see. That's what we believe, and Jesus taught that, by the way. So we understand that. So if you look at that two, those two combinations, you have one combination that'll teach uh, that of all that exists that you can see with or without the unaided eye. That's an important understanding to know that, but, but we go to the next step. If you're saying that's all that exists, then you have limited yourself for no uh, uh, applicable reason, no, no empirical reason. You cannot give a full explanation of why you believe this is all that exists. And I can prove to you it isn't by simply taking your own science and my own science, which is the science of evolution. If you believe in evolution, you cannot believe that we can see all of reality because that would mean that you know that we have evolved completely. And you know what? You can't know that. So as you can see, so faith it brings in this other element. Faith brings in this truth that brings a deeper understanding of who we are to that machine-like science. And that's the context that we have to preach on today. We preach on faith and science because they are not opposing realities, they are complementary. Just as the physical world and the spiritual world are not opposing realities per se, they can be, but they are also complementary because we live in both of them. We'll talk more tomorrow. Have a blessed day. If you would like to support our program, please consider a donation to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts. There are several ways to consider this. One is to purchase any of our merchandise, which you can find at the shopping tab at catholicaudiomedia.com. That's catholicaudiomedia.com. There are coffee mugs there. There's also my latest book, Encounter Christ in Your Humanity, all of which you can find at the shopping tab at catholicaudiomedia.com. You can also donate to the show directly through either the Donate tab, also at catholicaudiomedia.com, or by sending a donation through the U.S. Postal Service with your questions and comments at 43 Holton Street, Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. That's St. Anthony Parish, 43 Holton Street, Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. Finally, the best way you can support our parish is to attend Mass on Sundays at 10 o'clock and be a part of our parish. We thank you for any support you would like to give to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts, the sponsoring parish for this media outreach to Catholics and other Christians in the WROL, WEZE, and podcast listening audience. In Cristo vivimos.